going down. That didn't take too long. Not too bad. Okay. What's this little airplane called? The cost? No, no what's it called? Called it's a CA2. Like, is this something that you built from plans or? This is a plans built airplane. It's, the plans are sold through Hummel Aviation. Now, uh, how do the plans come? What do they look like when you get them? Um, they're on a 17 by 11 sheet. They're very clear information. It's it's an easy build set of plans to follow. Is there a materials list as well the, for the sourcing and that type of thing? Yeah. Um, whenever you get your plans, you get a building manual, a builder's manual. And in the builder's manual, a couple of the last pages have a list of materials. Um, they even have a list in there where you can find the materials. What about tools? Uh, what's, was there any special tools that you had to buy or to, to get a hold of, to, uh, to build this? Um, it can be built by all normal workshop tools. Um, I did buy a small shear that they sell in the EAA magazine. It's a 30 inch shear. It made my life a lot easier on that. And I bought a uh, air riveter, which makes it so your hands don't ache after 4,000 rivets. So, yeah, there were a couple special tools that I did buy. Now, uh, what type of a facility would you need to, to build the whole airplane in? Like, did you uh, take your, your basement or your living room to do it and the old lady was mad at you? Or? This is. Uh, the old story, I built it in the basement and I cut a hole through the wall to get it out. Uh, as long as I'm sitting here, I had to cut a hole through the porch wall in order to get it out of the house. And uh, it was built in an area about 14 foot by 10 foot. As I'd build one piece, I'd hang it in the rafters of the basement and go build another piece and hang it up. And after I had everything built, I went to... Uh, a local man who has a small warehouse and I set it up in his warehouse and I rigged it and rigged the controls uh, to make sure everything fit properly and then it was moved to the airport. Now when you were building the airplane is there any uh, like have you worked with metal like this before? Or? No I had no former experience this is my first airplane project um, I have done a little bit of restoration work on antique tractors and pickup trucks, but I have never tackled aluminum, and uh, it was a new, it was a brand new project for me. How many hours would it have taken you to uh, get it to the, the stage that it's at now? Uh, just under 600 hours, and that's including the paint, paint work that's done on it. Uh, a little over 400 hours on the airframe, and then uh, the balance on the preparation and painting. Now, when you start building this, where do you start? I mean, do you, do you get right into the wing, or would you start at the tail? What's the easiest way to... I started with the tail. Now, uh, I didn't know if I was going to like the project or not. I started with the tail, decided I liked the project. I went from the tail to the wings. After the wings were completed, then I did the fuselage. And, of course, uh, the rest fell in after I started, uh, whenever the fuselage was done, I built my motor mounts and and uh, all my controls. Now what type of construction is used in the fuselage, for example? Like, it, it's it's all metal construction, aluminum, but, uh, like, is it uh, a tube type of structure? Or? No, this is a extruded aluminum angle, uh, mostly 16th inch by um, 3 quarter inch. It's uh, 62 thousandths thick, and uh, it has uh, gussets, 40 thousandths gussets, and, and uh, a couple 62 thousandths gussets. Uh, sheet aluminum, 2024 T3 sheet aluminum, and it's all pop riveted and bolted together. There is no welding on this airplane any place. It's all uh, pop rivet and bolts. But the wing design and uh, what type of construction is used in the wing? It's a uh, hairy riblet wing design. It uh, has a uh, main spar, front spar, and a rear spar. It's uh, aluminum tube ribs with uh, hand formed angle iron cross bracing in them. It's uh, 16 thousandths 
2024 sheet over top of it, uh, with exceptions of the leading edge, and the leading edge is 20 thousandths. Now, you've got this thing uh, all built now, and you go to put an engine on it. Uh, what type of uh, engine have we got on this? We have a Hummel designed half Volkswagen. Uh, it was built at home, it was not built at Hummel. Uh, we bought the plans approximately 10 years ago, and the engine is uh, 94 millimeter jugs with a 69 millimeter stroke, and uh, it's got an updraft Zenith carburetor. It's a little sweetheart, it runs great. And also on this engine, we put a secondary ignition. This has dual ignition on it. The Fairbanks mag produces a primary ignition, and the uh, secondary ignition is a motorcycle coil uh, rigged into a, a emergency light battery, and we use the base of the distributor, and the points is still in there, and that's what sets our timing for our spark on our secondary ignition. Now this is a direct drive unit? This is direct drive, yes. What kind of propeller are you spinning on? To it's a Tennessee 5422 propeller. Uh, seems to do the job the best. And what kind of performance do you get out of this airplane then for, for example, for uh, takeoff distance on land? It's very respectable. Um, I don't want to give exact numbers because I don't have very much experience in it yet. But it's approximately uh, 150 feet, maybe 200 feet on takeoff and uh, land and ground roll is uh, 200 to 250 feet. It uh, climbs out. Uh, with me, I'm inexperienced. I'm not pushing it at all at about 300 feet uh, per minute. It's, uh, it's a very gradual climb out. I would compare it to uh, possibly a Piper Cub or a little Cessna 150. It has about the same climb out. When uh, you've got it up and uh, climbing, what kind of cruise speed are we getting out of it? I'm cruising at 55 miles an hour. And the fuel economy? I mean, I understand that these engines are very fuel efficient. Yeah, uh, I love it. It's uh, about um, uh, one and a half gallons per hour. <laughs> it's it's great. Now, one of the things I've I've flown a couple of Volkswagens in the past. I've noticed that they have a, a, a vibration. Is the vibration pretty well gone on this one? Yeah, they. Uh, they're uh, balancing the cranks, and you get it tuned in, it runs very respectably smooth. There's a little bit of a roughness at the slow RPM, but the minute you break it past an idle, it smooths out and is, is perfectly smooth in the air. Now, uh, this one here is uh, wide open. Are you looking at some point in time putting a canopy or something on it? For or you live down here in Florida and don't really need the canopy? No, I'm from Meadville, Pennsylvania, up in the northwest corner of Pennsylvania. And uh, I have thought about putting a canopy on it. I still haven't made up my mind whether I'm going to or not. Right now, I love it the way it is. Okay. Well, thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate that. Have a good day.